Well, hello, friends and clients. It's Dr. Gary Senderoff with Cruise Planners, your leading Galapagos travel advisor. And today, I'm going to show you one of the places Silver Sea may take you when you are in Quito before you charter off to the Galapagos on your Silver Origin cruise. As a top partner with Silver Sea, please feel free to email me and I'll always save you money on your Silver Sea voyages. Never book direct or you're going to miss out on things like exclusive perks, including our award-winning value tracker. So for now, sit back and relax and enjoy this informative museum tour and email me when you want to save money on your Galapagos voyage or any other Silver Sea or other cruise voyage for that matter. Yintinyang is a Quechua word that means path of the sun. Okay, we are going to start the tour here in the famous part, the equator or the latitude 000. zero, zero. So we're going to start with the famous part of the tour as I said at the beginning. Here we have this replica, this representation of a funeral tola of the Kitukara culture. Okay, that was a pre Incan group and they used to live especially in the Pichincha province in all this territory. The Kitukara stopped in life after death and for that reason they used to bury people in fetal position as you can see in that replica and then they put the different belongings of the person inside the tola. For example, in this case we have some kind of tools and also, there you can see the famous spondylus shell. Years ago, that shell was very important for the indigenous because it was considered as money, as currency, for that reason was also inside the toll. About this indigenous group, about the Kitukaras, there is a theory that says that when the men, the leader or the king of the group died, he was buried but with his wife alive, okay? Years ago, it was like a honor because they thought that they were going together to We are going to find the line, okay, the representation. There is the north, here is the south, east and west. Okay, so there's the picture with the shoes or without shoes. Maybe if you move a little bit to your right or left so you can see the sign. about the Coriolis effect. Okay, Coriolis was a French scientist who studied the movement of water and wind, but according in the movement rotation of the planet Earth, that is like this, okay, from west to east. What happened with this movement? The planet produces a force that burns here in the middle and goes to the pole, that is the centrifugal force, and depending in the hemisphere, that force is going to give the directions, for example, to the natural phenomena, cyclones, typhoons, tornadoes, hurricanes. So now we are going to see what happened in each hemisphere, okay? We are going to start with you. You are in the south. Please look over here and tell me in which way is spinning the planet for you, to the right or left? To the left, okay? What happened for you in the north? To the left. The opposite because it depends in the perspective. But what happened with the movement here in the middle? This one is always the same, okay? It goes straight on. For that reason here, in this part of the hemisphere, we have those natural phenomena, but in the countries that are in the middle, as here in Ecuador, we don't have that, okay? Why? When the centrifugal force returns, what happens is cancel, okay? That's why here in Ecuador, we don't have tornadoes, hurricanes, cyclones, or typhoons. Of course, as you know, Ecuador is not a perfect country. We have all the kind of phenomena, air, in the south, cyclones and typhoons to the right. Are the same, but the names are different because of the way, because of the direction, okay? That is the difference. Now here, I'm going to explain you more about the latitude, about the equator. As you can see, this is the line and it crosses for around all these countries, okay? 13 countries in total. Why Ecuador is special, why Ecuador is considered as the middle of the world, instead of Colombia, Brazil, or other country over here, is because we have the best marketing, okay? Now, it's because of the altitude and also because of the elevations, the mountains. Let me show you. In Colombia and Brazil, the latitude crosses in the Amazon, in the jungle that is flat. In other places, we have just water, oceans. 
and in other countries desert flat and also less altitude because as you know the planet is not complete round like this representation is more oval similar like an egg and that's why Ecuador is the highest point we are the closest to the sun and the farthest to the center of the earth okay that's why Ecuador is the middle of the world now to understand better the first part of the Coriolis effect we are going to start with the activities so please all of you come closer around this thing so here we are in the middle what do you think that is going to happen with the water the direction no, just straight no, okay so please look over here look to the lips so you can see better the movement okay everybody ready look what happened uno dos three look the water and the lips nothing okay just straight now to understand better the difference we are going to have two short trips more first do you want to travel to the south or north? to argentina okay <laughs> and the same thing some closer around okay so now we are in the south what is going to happen here do you remember the direction in the south hemisphere right. to the right okay so here we are going to see the origin of the cyclones and Typhoon. Okay, look what happened here. One, two, and three. And look what happened with the lips. Okay, are spinning to the right or clockwise. Now let's travel one more time. Let's go to the north. Very short and cheap, cheap trips. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now we are in the north. What is going to happen here? The opposite way, the opposite direction. Do you remember the names of the natural phenomena in the north? Uh -huh. And tornadoes. Okay, very good. Look what happened here. One, two, three. And look what happened with the leaves. The opposite way, the opposite direction. Okay? Remember, as I said, this is just a didactic example to understand better the Coriolis everywhere, all around the world, but here in the middle is going to be a little bit easier because of the force, okay? Similar as the water. Let me show you how. You need to stand like me, okay? One foot in each hemisphere so you have more balance, and then take the egg like this, okay? From the bottom with all your fingers, with both hands, then raise your hands and with tiny movements you are going to try to balance the egg on the nail, little by little. Close, close, close. No wind, please. No pressure, we close at five. No. Okay, so like that. Who wants to try first? If you want, one person try here and other person there. Okay, now it's the time for the Ecuadorian alcohol test. Okay, what is going to happen? You are going to try to walk on the line, but with your feet like this. Okay, heel to toe, your arms out, your eyes closed, and chin up. Okay, like this. It's going to be hard because you are going to feel unbalanced, like something is pulling you. It's supposed that the same activity could be a little bit easier if you try far away from the line. On the line is harder because of the forces. If you want, you can start there or there, it doesn't matter the way, okay? You need to take just five or six steps to feel, okay? That is the famous part of the tour of the museum, okay? First, we are going to visit the big house. This house was for the family to sleep, for the different activities. And then we are going to visit that one that was the kitchen, okay? So please follow me here. Watch our kids in this part. And also here too. The light. Ecuadorian size. animals that we can find in the Amazon. We are going to start with this beauty, this baby tarantula, okay, Goliath. This one is just the baby. The adult can measure 30 centimeters from one leg to the other, similar like a ruler. These tarantula usually eat insects, but depending on the size and the age, they can also eat the small animals, for example, some kind of bird, okay? This. This is a fish that is called carnero or candiru and is also known as vampire fish or penis. 
What happens with this fish? If you go to the Amazon and you are naked and you pee in the river, this fish is going to swim up inside your urethra and then it's going to start feeding by your blood. Okay, it's considered as a kind of parasite and the unique way to take it off is by surgery. So, a very, very important lesson here, don't pee in the river, especially in the Amazon rainforest. Now look up here. This is the real skin of an anaconda. This one is just like a medium size because it's six meters long. In the Amazon, we can also find 10 to 12 meters long anacondas. Okay, huge animals. Now, as I said at the beginning, in the Amazon, we have many different indigenous groups. One of the most famous are the Shuar. Okay, why? Because years ago, they used to practice this process that is called Sansa or Shrunken. Okay, this one is just a replica. But then in the next part, I'm going to show you a real one and I'm going to explain you more about the process. Here, let me introduce to my last volunteer, my ex-boyfriend. <laughs> so, this is another replica, another representation of the Sansa or the Shrunken. Years ago, when the Shuar used to fight because of territory or other reasons and they killed their enemies, they practiced the Sansa because it was considered as a kind of trophy of war. It was to show power. When they killed their enemies, the first step was this. Okay? They cut the head in a V-shape to separate it from the body, and then they need to take out everything, brain, eyes, the skull, because they just need the skin and the hair. Then the third step, as you can see there, they put similar like this. They boil water with some secret plants for about 10 to 15 minutes more or less. This process was to shrink the skin a little bit and also to keep the hair in it as you can see in the red. Then, they sew the mouth like that and also here you can see, like this. In some cases, they also sew the eyes and the nose. This was to keep the spirit of the person inside the head so he cannot take revenge. The shrug thought that the spirit of people were always inside the head. And finally, they need to put very hot stones inside to dry the skin and also to shrink it more. And when the Sansa was ready, similar like this replica, they use it like this, on their spears, like this. And in some cases also as a necklace, as you can see in the last picture, in the last row. Years ago, just a few years ago, officially in 1960, they stopped doing this with people. But now, to continue with the tradition, they are still doing this just with animals. Okay, for example, monkeys, and sloths. Now I'm going to show you two real sansas. This one, for example, is the real head of a sloth. And this one, the famous one here, this is a real human head. There you can see the mouth, nose, ears. As you can see, this one is very small, it's tiny, because of all the process, and also because maybe he was a 12 years old kid. Okay, but why? Years ago, when you were 12 years old, you were already an adult, and for that reason, maybe he was an enemy of a group, and also maybe he was a leader. That's why you can see the decoration like this with the feathers. About the size of the Sansa, there is a theory that says that if you put your hand like this, that is the size of your shrunken head or your Sansa, okay? Similar to the size of your heart. This one that we have here was like a gift of the Schwar community to the museum, so we can explain about this uh, tradition, about this practice. Okay, these are why you sell leaves and are to prepare a kind of energetic tea that is very popular in the Amazon. It's like the natural red bull. Nowadays, we can also find the why you sell in the supermarkets, in the tea bags, and it's also an important ingredient to make other kind of products, for example, beer, chocolate, and many others. Okay, so these are Guayusa leaves, okay? Maybe you have questions about this? We are now in Quito, the capital of Ecuador, and finally the Amazon region, all this territory. This indigenous group, the Guaranis, they live especially here where is located the Yasuni National Park. And the groups, the isolated groups, the Tagaeri and Taromenani, they live especially here in the limit in the Amazon region between Ecuador and Peru. Okay? This map is old and that's why this red border is incomplete here. It's because years ago all this territory that is also Amazon was part of Ecuador. But then we have some kind of war, some problems with Peru. So now all of this is part of Peru and Ecuador is just this part and the Galapagos Islands. We lost all this territory in 1942, 
But the last war, the last problem that we had with Peru was in 1995. Okay, a few years ago, but now we are brothers, no problem. Okay, <laughs> maybe you have questions here? No? For the best value on your next Silver Sea Galapagos cruise, email me at gary.senderoff at cruiseplanners.com. Don't forget to visit my webpage at www.tourdoctors.com and you can sign up for my VIP email list. Don't forget to subscribe to watch more videos like this and have a look at my other cool travel videos. Thanks for watching and keep exploring.